let's have some pleasure. Fifth class pleasure is very easy to identify. Everybody's into it. I mean, most of the time that most people spend in this world, they're chasing fifth class pleasure. Now, fifth class pleasure is physical and material pleasure. Good food, good clothes, nice home, music, scenery. <laughs> you know, we all identify with it. Ah, it's good stuff, yeah. And we believe in it. It's pleasure. All pleasure is energy. So, get it. But in order to get it, there are three things in each class. There are three things you have to appreciate. The first is that in every class there's an exchange rate. Not all pleasures are the same. A beautiful scene, an ice cream cone, a beautiful home, uh, a piece of music. They're not all the same value. How do you tell the exchange rate? You see, if I say to you, I'll give you 100000 for that watch. Would you, would you give me your watch for 100000 Sure, right? A hundred thousand prutot. You know what a prutai is? There's one hundred pruta to a lira, ten lira to a shekel, the old shkalim, a thousand five hundred old shkalim to a dollar. That's three cents. Bad deal. Terrible. So you can't understand if somebody, if you're international business and they say a hundred thousand dollars, you want to know whether it's Canadian dollars, American dollars, Australian dollars, and it's not all the same. You want to know the exchange rate. Does that make sense? How about if you got to deal with 100,000 yen? And you say, hey, look it up now, <laughs> you know? How much is the yen? Where does it stand today? So now in pleasure also, they're not all the same. So how do you measure which pleasure is heavier, which pleasure is less? I like this one. Come on, which, how do you measure it? So you know, if you go into a store and you say, I want a lot of light. Or I want a bulb that gives a lot of light. Can you imagine the frustration of the guy? He says, how much light do you want? A lot, a lot. Look, friend, how many watts? Is that right? You say 150 watts. He says, oh, that's a lot of light. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? You say 150,000 watts. He says, wow, well, you got the money. I mean, we'll have to make it up, <laughs> right? But you're going to have a measure. Now, you go into a store and you say, look, I want a, a motor with a lot of power. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. How much power you want? A lot of power. How much horsepower? You know, horsepower is how much a horse can pull. <laughs> One horse can pull in the 32 feet. What is it? I don't, I don't know what the... But horsepower. Oh, he says, oh, okay. How much horsepower? 100,000 horse. Boom, that's... All right, we'll get you the motor, right? Do, do you see that? Okay, so how much pleasure you want? How, how much pleasure is it going to give you? How do you measure? You know what it is? Pleasure is horsepower, because pleasure gives you energy. You got pleasure, you can tackle a job that takes a lot of effort. You got pleasure, you can use your mind, it takes a lot of effort. <laughs> you need horsepower. You got pleasure, you can take aggravation. Pleasure is power, it gives you energy, you see that? So you kind of think, if I have that ice cream, how much energy will I get? If I listen to that piece of music, how much energy will I get? It takes some time to be able to measure it, but that's the way you're doing it rationally. Make sense? Okay, there's another answer. What if I give him $100,000? Boy, you'd be, you'd be tickled pink. 100,000 American dollars. Wow, we, what a deal. You're going to Hamash Beer, you know, that's the department store. You buy yourself 10 watches, you know, <laughs> All right? And you still got, uh, you know, a good $99,000 left, yeah? Okay, you feel great. You're walking out. There's two policemen waiting for you. They escort you to the local who's cow. What's the matter? Why, what do they want? What do they want? What happened? Counterfeit money. <laughs> you heard of counterfeit money, didn't you? It's counterfeit pleasure. People make mistakes all the time. They think they're going to have pleasure. They wind up with a can of worms. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah? They thought they anticipated pleasure. You know... Everybody knows, I mean, pornography, counterfeit, that's lust. It depresses you, no energy. <laughs> it's depressing, that leaves you, ah, yeah. It doesn't go anywhere. Oh, it's excitement, <laughs> it's not energy. That's counterfeit pleasure, you see that? The most widely accepted counterfeit pleasure in the Western world 
is decadence, counterfeit pleasure, decadence. You've heard the Americans, Westerners are decadent? So, we like to show it to you. Now, in Judaism, we don't say accept it, you're decadent. I mean, I'm a Westerner too, we're all decadent, you know, but, but show me, isn't that fair? So let me ask you, young lady, tell me, what's the opposite of pain? Fine, we were amongst friends, but pleasure, right? What's the opposite of pain? Pleasure, right? Yeah, decadent. <laughs> decadent, that's the definition of decadence. Because the opposite of pain is really comfort. Comfort. To equate pleasure with being comfortable, that's decadence. To equate pleasure with being comfortable, that's being decadent. That's taking the counterfeit. To the Westerner, the ultimate pleasure is to get to Hawaii on a waterbed with a cool breeze, relaxed, every bone in your body, a tall drink. You, you, you get it? You're feeling it? Uh, wow, every bone in your body, relaxed, so relaxed. Wow, you're almost asleep. Watch out. <laughs> you fall asleep, you missed it all. Yeah? Right? <laughs> you gotta watch out. But if you can only hang on, you know, so relaxed. Boy, that's living. That's almost asleep. <laughs> In reality, pain is the price you got to pay for pleasure. Pain is the price for pleasure. You want to keep fit? You gotta have pain. You know, you gotta run. You want to graduate college? Is that your pleasure? <laughs> Takes a lot of pain, right? You want to pass the finals? <laughs> you want to get a job? <laughs> takes pain. Pain is the price for pleasure. You want to be a lawyer? You want to be a champion, Olympic champion. Do you realize every last one of them for the pleasure of being with that gold has taken an awful lot of pain? Is that right? Is that recognized? Yeah? You want to be a champion human being? <laughs> you think you're going to do it <laughs> at an Hawaii beach? <laughs> Nonsense. You got to take the pain for pleasure. Do you see that? Tell me, what's the greatest pleasure your parents have in this world? The kids. Tell me, what's the greatest pain your parents have in this world? The kids. Isn't that right? You want the greatest pleasure most human beings will ever have. You have to take the pain. You, can, you think you're going to have kids without pain? <laughs> what, what do you say? <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> it's not going to be. You want that pleasure, you got to take that pain. So you ask a young person in America, well, how many kids? You want that greatest pleasure most human beings have. I mean, that's pleasure, right? How many kids are you going to have? Wow. Let's applaud. Right? <laughs> how about, that's good. Five is good. You know, it's 1.7 now. <laughs> Median uh, child in the United States, you know. You and your wife. Right, okay. How many kids are you going to have? You're going to have them, yeah. <laughs> wow, fantastic. That's, that's what we got to hear, right? But you ask the average American, you're going to have kids? Yeah. How many kids are you going to have? 1.5. That's the average, right? You say, well, why are you going to have these children? Well, because it's pleasure, right? Well, if it's pleasure, why not have 12? Oh, no. What's the matter? Too much pleasure? <laughs> Too much pain. Do you, do you see that? Okay, so that's the counterfeit that people are taking, and they're not going to have the pleasure, and they're going to make mistakes. They, they just run away from anything that requires, really changes pleasure, and pleasure requires pain. Do you see that? All right, so in every category, you've got to understand there's an exchange rate, and there's also counterfeit. And on top of that, you got to learn how to enjoy it. Even simple pleasure, like physical, material pleasure, you got to learn how to enjoy. Everybody knows, and everybody here most probably took a course in music appreciation, or read a book in art appreciation. Everybody, you know, if you want to enjoy it, you got to learn a little bit. you got to know how. But I don't know if you all know that there is such a thing as a course in wine appreciation. Wine tasting, Harvard University, Columbia University. You like wine? 
You like wine? You take this course, you'll really enjoy it. Yeah? If you don't like wine, not recommended. <laughs> but if you like wine, mm, then you'll uh, professor for a whole semester. <laughs> he'll teach you a little bit about the bouquet and the aroma and the body. I don't, I don't, I don't like wine, so I didn't take the course. But. <laughs> But I can understand, you know, if you like it, then you'll learn something, makes sense, yeah? So, you see, we have a lot of pleasure, you know, you go swimming in the summer, boy, that's pleasure, yeah? The first five minutes. It takes you an hour to get to the beach, you run into the water, wow, you're living for maybe ten minutes, yeah? Then it took an hour to get here and there was so much trouble, are you going to leave now? <laughs> Yeah, so you gotta hang around and suffer <laughs> because I mean it's ridiculous, yeah. But really, you've had it. <laughs> really, you should learn how to enjoy an hour at the beach. <laughs> a beautiful day, of two minutes worth. <laughs> yeah, beautiful day. It's easy. You don't have to travel an hour. Did you notice? Breeze the day. Maybe two minutes. It gives you a lift. And then dull. <laughs> you got nothing. Gourmet eating. Yeah. You know, there are people who make gourmet food and then they get one of these, uh, uh, these uh, barbarians who puts ketchup all over the thing. <laughs> they want to kill them. <laughs> so in each category, three things. An exchange rate, watch out for the counterfeit, and learn how to enjoy it. Learn how to enjoy it. And each one, even in simple physical pleasure. But that's fifth class pleasure. That's what we're talking about, right? Now, when you go to the next class, what makes it a different class? No exchange rate. See, we're used to first class, second class, third class. They call it first class, business class, and tourist class. You know, you're going third class, right? But it's really not that bad. You, know, you get the same seat. Maybe the seat in front of you is under your nose. Yeah, but it's a seat. <laughs> yeah. And occasionally the stewardess will even give you a glass of soda. <laughs> Especially if you cry, <laughs> you know, you get some service, yeah. In business class, you get a little wider seat, a little more service. First class, they get you a lot of service and a wide seat. But really, you go to the same place, you got a seat, you, get, I mean, you bring your own water. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, not, it's not that much of a difference. But when it comes to classes of pleasure from fifth class to fourth class, it's a different world. No exchange rate. There's no amount of fifth class pleasure that can buy you a unit of fourth class pleasure. Now what in the world is fourth class pleasure?